I want to go back to the, the process of, of making the film from the time you had the idea, but, but the uh, impressions I have from, from the interviews I've read is that you went through several different iterations before ar arriving at the, at the place you, you did. Can you talk about some of those steps? Yeah, so, I mean, the first thing that happened was, you know, Iris and I basically, you know, without knowing what the film would be, decided to interview my dad for four or five days. And we just... I'm curious, did you know it would be a film or was it partly maybe just going to be a family history? I mean, the idea was that maybe it would be a film, but I just wanted to have it recorded. And that was Is really... Is that the interview we see in yeah. the kitchen? And exactly, yeah. So that, and that, you know, I thought would be a day-long interview and it, was a, it ended up being about four or five days, which, you know, we organized for, but I didn't think we'd use the time and we did. Um, and we just sort of sat and hashed it out and you know iris had made um a short film a short doc called point of departure about her own family that was at the real asian festival a couple of years earlier and it was using super 8 footage from her family and i just remember the first kind of shot of that film with the words that came up with that i just was sobbing uncontrollably immediately and there was something about somebody looking at their family and you know looking with super eight that had such immediate nostalgia and power for me and so we had that in mind um and uh so we did that that interview and then you know anita came on board and we talked more and more and i started writing um treatments and you know the treatments got more and more elaborate i did the canadian film center uh C the cfc nfb doc program which was a year-long development program, which I, this film would never have been made without because it it forced me to keep working on it, and there are many times I didn't want to, and you know, so but just having the structure, just knowing they accepted me, I better follow through. Exactly, on this. exactly, and and you know, it was great because you know because I knew I didn't know anything about how to make a documentary, and I, I was, I'm a huge documentary fan, but I didn't know anything about the process. I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing until I had I think I had 300 page single space scripts for the film that were like little novels that I would keep distributing to this group of documentary filmmakers who are quite experienced. And they would patiently read like every draft of these little novels. <laughs> and then finally, someone who shall remain like stood up and went, okay, so I think Sarah, I, can, we, can we just all agree in the room that uh, we're gonna stop writing now? No more writing. Stop. Like, they, like, no one wanted to read anything else. They were like, you need to just start shooting things. And that was a real departure for me because I was used to only shooting when I was completely and absolutely prepared and knew what I was going to get. And that was a lot harder for me to wrap my head around than I thought it would be, that idea of not being able to control everything. You, you talked about how you had this early idea of, um, of things taking place on a stage and, and, this, and, and it you know, somehow adapted into the, the structure of the film uh, that you wind up. And, you know, when I think about that film and, and I think about how I watched it and totally accepted these eight millimeter movies as, as real films, uh, even though like a little bit in the back of my head, I was like, wow, that's really fortuitous that, uh, that someone was there. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, come on, you, you did too. <laughs> Uh, how, talk to me about the process of like how you knew that was going to work. Well, I think we were a little bit shocked by how it worked because I, I think our idea was um, we wanted to have moments where the audience wondered if what they were seeing was real or if what they were seeing was recreated in the same way that you know, I, as going through this personal history and asking all of these questions of people, was constantly wondering, is, is what I'm hearing real or is it, you know, your memory imbued with nostalgia? Is it what you want to remember? Is it uh, what you're saying to protect someone? Like, what is real and what isn't? And it was a constant kind of tightrope walk I was walking going through the story myself. And I think we wanted to give the audience that parallel experience of, you know, is, is or just having a question, is that is that a recreation or is that real archival? Um, it was, it was, I think, surprising, and, and it was thrilling, but surprising to us that um, so many people didn't know, they didn't even have a sense they were recreations until like three quarters of the way through the film, or some people even at the credits. 
I mean, even after we reveal me directing. I knew before the credits. Okay, good, nice. <laughs> but yeah, but it's interesting though, like that sequence of me directing the actors and, you know, on camera, that sometimes actually doesn't clue into people as well. In fact, like somebody I know who's a really great film critic um, said to me that they thought that, they ha that I had CGI'd myself into old footage with my mother. <laughs> so, you know, I think that shocked us or, you know, and, I, and, and it just occurred to us that when, at one of our final sort of, uh, when we started showing the film to people, it still had a little way to go, like two weeks of editing left, and I remember, you know, a, a writer I hugely respect and who knows a ton about film and has written about film, and we were talking about Rebecca Jenkins, who's, you know, I think really sells the film in a way, because she plays my mother, and she's so brilliant what she, what she did. Um, and we were talking about Rebecca Jenkins and how great she was, and she, he said, why is everybody talking about Rebecca Jenkins? What does she have to do with anything? And we were like, well, she plays my mom. And she was like, your mom plays your mom. Like, what are you talking about? Like, and, th and there was a moment where I thought he was crazy and having a nervous breakdown. But then we, we started to realize that people are, people are thinking this is real. So I feel like the idea of really fooling people and wanting to fool people would be something that I would instinctually just reject on ethical grounds. Like, I, like you know, as a documentary watcher, I, I feel like if, if someone intentionally is trying to mess with me, I get kind of mad. Um, so it, it's not something we would have set out to do so specifically. We certainly wanted to match it close enough to um, raise the question. But I think um, between Rebecca um, and Leah Carlson, who is our, our art department, our amazing hair and makeup team, um, incredible wardrobe, and then Iris exhaustively and crazy makingly testing every Super 8 stock and camera in the city <laughs> to try to match it. I think that kind of sold it in a way that um, went a little bit beyond what we had what we had hoped for. And it was it was lovely and a, a great surprise, but it was certainly um, a surprise that that people really didn't know until that reveal. I may be asking a naive question here, uh, forgetting some detail of the film, but. Uh, do you have actual eight millimeter footage of your family that you could kind of come, you yeah. know, use as a guide? Oh, so that's important information. So, so I think 40% of it is real. So it is actually, there. It is ton of it is my mother and it is super eight footage of my family. And then we did these recreations, hoping that they yeah, would so match it up that people would wonder what's I never what. really sussed out okay, before, yeah. yeah. So at least 40% is real. I wonder if you can reflect on other kinds of differences or similarities in, in the process between fiction and documentary. I feel like there was there was so little that was similar, actually. Um, one thing that surprised me was, you know, knowing how many f of my documentary filmmaker friends have trouble getting financed for their fictional films, that became hilarious to me. Like, when I tried to make a doc, and it was like, you know, I think comparatively it's easier to go from being a fictional filmmaker to making a documentary. It's hilarious to me that that should be easier, because documentaries are so much harder to make. And there's nothing in making... I think a fictional film that prepares you at all for making um, a doc. So I, I was I was I was surprised to find that out because I know people do move sometimes seamlessly between the two mediums, but um, I I found it really challenging and also it's deceptively hard because up front it's so much easier. Like you know, you're, it's such a small crew. You're so mobile. You can you know do stuff at the last minute. You know things don't cost a million dollars if you change your mind. Like there's so much more freedom and seemingly there's more ease in the process when you're shooting and then it just comes and kicks you in the ass in the editing room <laughs> and you're like, ha ha, you thought it was gonna be easy, it's actually a nightmare. Um, so um, I found that like really, the, the process of documentary editing, I just couldn't believe how confused it's possible to get as a human being.